sorry that we have to switch to English now. Okay, I do not speak your beautiful language. I could say Dobro Jutro, so, because I learned Russian at school, but only other ones of you would understand it. If the title of my presentation was translated correctly, then you would find something like digitalization. What would it mean to governments on this slide? Oh, I have to click. <laughs> I learned at university that it sometimes makes sense before you talk about things to define what you are going to talk about. If you look at the internet, Wikipedia or whatever, and you key in the word digitalization, you get back a lot of definitions. Okay? One is that one. The digitalization is the integration of digital technologies into everyday life by the digitization of everything that can be digitized. At my university, coming up with a de definition like that, they would have thrown me out. Okay? Because what is it about? Okay? And what have we done over the last 40 years? We use technology to support processes we could support with technology, which is the same circle definition. So let's go deeper into it. What does it mean now? Does it mean an evolution? Is digitalization the next step of e-government? The next step to support online services? Or is it as disruptive as we think it is? And why would it be disruptive? Is it a revolution? Or worse? Worse. Is it just a buzzword? Is it just something we use to make the IT industry more interesting now? What is it? And what does it mean to governments? Here's some hard facts. Okay? You cannot deny that a lot of technologies have matured over the last years, have come to the market completely brand new. Think about big data. Think about sensor technologies that can be found everywhere today. Think about devices, mobile devices, smartphones. Okay? So, without a shadow of a doubt, these things are there. Okay? And, on the other side, and according to Gardner, okay, we already have 8.4 billion, 8.4 billion of things that are somehow connected to the internet today. 8.4 things that could talk to each other. Just imagine the figure. Okay? And this is growing at a pace of 30% per year. Okay? That's crazy. So, digitalization seems to be there. If it's an evolution or a revolution, we will see later on all we need to discuss. It is a, depends on your point of view anyway. But what we need to find out is, does digitalization help you as a government to achieve your targets better? And I brought some examples that could make you think, that could make you better consider it, you know, what's going on in this market and what's going on for in the digitalization for governments arena. Take this as an example. This is from the Ministry of Finance in Slovenia. Just imagine you are in charge of the stable income of your government. And as in many other European countries and also in the rest of the world, okay, this is linked to tax income, of course. One of the biggest sources of income for your state is sales tax, value-added tax. And you know, if you did something to make sure that the money the economy owes to you finds its way to your public coffers, right? then you would have a much more stable income. 
what would you do? Okay, so the first idea is, of course, transparency, because without knowing what's going on, you cannot respond to it, you cannot collect tax if you don't know what to pay, to, what they would have to pay taxes on, okay? In the old days, what would you have done? You send inspectors out. How many of these? Yeah. You cannot be successful. But now just imagine, just imagine you would be able to get 100% transparency into any invoicing process in your country. Digitalization can do that. The state of Slovenia, they managed to link one more thing to the internet, or not one more, each cash register in the country. Okay? Each cash register. And of course you can only do that if you have technologies that help you, you know, to check very fast in the background. If there is an invoice, you have to give this invoice some kind of a unique number, okay, so that you can recognize it again. And you need to confirm that this is a correct invoice. With this thing, which sounds very simple, okay, they managed, <coughs> or they expect, to get 50 million euros per year, annually, more into the public uh, tilt. This is what it looks like. Okay? So, alongside the process, you have a mobile device application you can download, um, where the people, okay, the clients in a transaction, can actually check if the invoice they get is a real one, a correct one. And with this, they take part in a lottery, so they have an incentive to, do, to ask for an invoice. Okay? The second thing is the uh, tool for an inspector, also for mobile devices. So you can send out inspectors, they go into a restaurant or into a shop, say, show me the invoice, I check if this invoice is registered with the Ministry of Finance. Okay. And they can also check the whole history of a certain yeah, taxpayer, maybe a restaurant. And in the background, there is a tool that collects all those data to find out if there are suspicious patterns. Okay. So if you can see, okay, people with a certain background, there is a certain location maybe, a certain business that is more prone to tax fraud than the others. Okay? So, I think this is disruptive. Another example. Imagine, you are the mayor of a big city, in this case of Buenos Aires. It is very rainy, double as rainy as in Riga, you know. It is a very old city, okay? so the infrastructure you have must be seen as a given, at least in short term. Thanks to this combination, there are a lot of floodings in your, in your city. People are extremely unhappy, plus in this case you have a very dense population. So millions of people. Eh? And then it stops. No floodings anymore. Thanks to what? Thanks to the clever use of digital means. Okay? What is it they did? One point, they completely modernized the whole maintenance system with the help of IT. You could say this is pretty commodity. I mean, there are so many organizations, public service and private industries around the world who would say, okay, we do support our maintenance with an end-to-end -end application. Okay? It is nice, you know, but it's not really a revolution. But now think that all the assets okay, that somehow belong to your drainage system would be linked to a network with the help of sensors. What would be if you could you know, remotely find out what the status, the technical status of a certain pump is, 
or what, whatever stands for drainage system. Okay? What if you could, with the help of weather forecast data, okay, and maybe the speed of the, of the water going through your drainage, with this combination, what if you could forecast what the flood situation would look like in one hour or two or tomorrow? You could respond much faster and much better and much more effective. If you now, point three, support your workforce in a, in a completely different way, okay? give them all the data with mobile tools, with mobile devices, they need to go to a certain spot, to go to an asset. If they had all the information on this very special asset with them, okay? if they could go there, just click on a sensor and the system, like in a, in a garage with your, with your car, and the system could tell you, this is wrong with me, okay? Please repair. And if you then would use the crowd, the people of Buenos Aires in this case, with their mobile phones, and every time they run into a problem, they detect a problem, like a stuffed drainage, they would take a photo and send a complaint to your city. This would be revolution. And now look at this. Located at the mouth of Rio de la Plata, flooding has historically been an issue in Buenos Aires. Nine underground rivers run beneath the city, an aging infrastructure, drainage channels clogged with garbage, and a dense population don't help. A partir del trabajo de modernización de la ciudad, empezamos a tomar conciencia de que había información que podíamos utilizar para tomar decisiones más eficientes. Al principio, toda la administración estaba en papel. Nosotros nos dimos cuenta que de esa manera no era posible tomar las decisiones adecuadas. Technology to the rescue. The city turned to SAP for help. They collect and analyze data from sensors, weather reports, garbage collectors, and citizens' complaints in real time. The program, Future Cities, helps urban leaders improve people's quality of life. The sensors are all across town. They measure the direction, speed, and level of water. SAP HANA in-memory technology immediately identifies areas in need of support. Es muy importante disponer de información de tiempo real en situaciones de emergencia urbana para tomar las medidas inmediatamente. Una demora de minutos puede generar catástrofes eh, impredecibles. In 2014, it rained more than ever before in the history of Buenos Aires. But this time, the rain didn't rule. The city, flood-free. 30,000 storm drains, clear. Neighboring areas not using the technology, still soaked. No estamos exentos de que lo que sucedió climáticamente en 2013 nos vuelva a suceder. Así que para nosotros es muy importante lo que hicimos, ya que la tecnología nos permite adelantarnos a estas situaciones. For the Zeladas, this means more than clean streets and clean drains. It's safety and security for Claudia and her family. Technology has improved her life and millions of other lives in Buenos Aires. More revolution, right? Remember the assets you have seen, okay? So, as an inspector, you could have some kind of a digital twin of the asset, okay? The idea of digital twins you can find everywhere now, at least on the side of the IT vendors. Look at this for an example. Just imagine you are someone who cares uh, about emergency, or you are an inspector, and you would be able to go to the asset before you actually go there with the help of virtual reality. This, the big one, you know, is a model of our office in uh, Potsdam, very close to Berlin. So if I wanted to, I could go in there right now and check, okay, are all the smoke detectors on the right place? Um, if I was searching for a certain person, I could key in the name and the system would tell me, like your navigation system in your car, you have to go up, take the next lift, and there you will find this guy, okay? You could go into a certain asset saying, what is the status, still in virtual reality, okay? You could go in there and say, what is the status of this asset? And um, 
what are the components this asset is made of. If I send an inspection there, what should they take with them? Things like that. Okay? So, although this sounds so simple, also this is a completely second world in which you can make or get information to make proper decisions. With only five minutes left, we have to rush through this one. This is a good case from the French police. Okay? Um, for them, digitalization meant we recognized that we have so many data. We know so many things, but unfortunately, we don't know. We think that the solution of many of our problems lies in these data. So they started a project, and this is of course related to big data, to collect all the data from many, many sources and to find relations, okay? To find yeah, advice what to do in a certain situation, okay? And if you look at the scenarios they run, you can see some examples on the left-hand side, okay? You can go and use big data to predict car theft in your country. So you can change your resource allocation in a way you know, to prevent car theft much better. Sounds simple, but without big data, not possible. Okay? Um, you can use this data also to allocate the equipment you have much better. You can check what a delay in maintenance of a certain vehicle may mean to the security situation in a certain place. Or you could check how does your people respond to activities of your organization, which is called sentiment analysis. So you can check what's going on in the social networks. Are they find it negative or positive what my organization is doing right now? Immediately, okay? Um, and one of the examples that is, sounds very humble, but it's quite interesting, is the one for the resources. They now have tools, e-recruiting tools, which which they can find out if the people applying for a job with them you know, would stay longer or only for a short time with them, and the system would give them advice what to do with them, how to support them best so that they stay with your organization. This, of course, only is of high interest for people who, or for organizations who spend a lot of money and time for training, like for the Gendarmerie Nationale or for the military, okay, for the army. Okay. So they can now say exactly, if you are from a certain region, maybe from the rural areas of France, you tend to stay with the army. If you are from Paris, you tend to go back to Paris and say goodbye to the army. Okay. And then they can come up with a program that helps you to stay on the job. And this is uh, the cherry on the cake. This is how digitalization changed your meeting culture. This is something we call digital boardroom. But the idea behind it, and only possible with digital tools, is that you have as an organization some kind of a control room like Houston, okay? Like a NASA command center, or the one of your police. Just imagine you go into a room, you have sc three screens in front of you, and they give you the insight you need in real time about all the things you want to talk about. Okay? We will go into an example in a second. So it sounds very abstract, but you will see you know, this is of extreme interest to all our clients. Okay? They are almost enthusiastic. And you will see why in a second. It goes back, by the way, to a very <coughs> or that, that, that to, to an idea from Hasso Plattner directly, who always thought, okay, who was our, one of our founders, who always thought, okay, I need to go to these meetings, and all the people come unprepared with a bundle of paper under their arm, or they say, okay, I have this Excel, and they always had to discuss who is right and who is wrong. And this is to end all the discussions.
we built this together with the United Nations um, Industrial Development Organization for their 50th anniversary last year. Stop it for a second, please. Here you can see the boardroom or the meeting room. You can see behind us the three screens. The three screens work with each other, so they are interactive. If you click on the screen on the left-hand side, okay, the others will change. So you can jump from detail you know, to a higher level of information. You can say, okay, um, compare two scenarios with each other, and you always have it on the screens. So everybody can understand it. Okay. Go on, please. Here for the UNIDO, it is important to have a general overview as an entry point. You can always go into the details, you can compare certain years and certain countries with each other. You see there is something like a geographical information system integrated, this time from, from S3. You can go to the right then, okay, so you click on the left hand on something like show me the trade balance and all the interesting data from Korea. On the right hand side it is shown to you what are the details. Okay? And here you have your government priorities. And you can drill down and down and down. Okay? And this is what it looks like if you go into the details. Again, the screens are changing. Of course, this is the time is up, I have to speed up, sorry. <laughs> um, of course, this boardroom is made to your requirements, okay? So we don't tell you you have to go for the boardroom that was done for you neither. You could do all the things in, okay? So everything that is important for your agency or for your government, okay, can be put in there and it gives you the chance to analyze data, okay? And in a very easy to understand way. This takes me to the end of the presentation. Um, in, as an IT vendor, of course, you could rattle on and on and on. Okay? There are so many interesting examples of digitalization in this world. Some are more on the evolutionary side. Some are really a revolution. Okay? But to conclude, I think digital or digitalization is here. Okay? And the governments are here. It takes two to tango, so and I think you should start. And especially here in the in the Baltic states, I mean you are so progressive, okay? You should take it and make the best out of it, more out of it. The second point is the digital strategies are highly individual. Okay? So all these things have to be tailor made to your needs, to your priorities. The third thing is the potential of digital is everywhere. I mean, you see the more uh, resource-related things from the Gendarmerie Nationale. You see, like a city has changed the way it works to prevent floods. Okay? So there are so many ways to use digital technologies to make the life of your people better. Okay? And the fourth thing is, I think that collaboration is key. I have been in many projects and very often you have people you have to work with in this area uh, you have never met before. So if you think about the integration of drones as an example in such a scenario, okay, maybe to deliver medical remedies to, to, uh, to rural areas or something like that, okay, then you know that there is no one in your organization who is expert enough okay, to solve the drone problem, the information technology problem in terms of applications, and who has enough insight into government priorities. So we need to work together. Okay? And I'm convinced this is a way to bring this forward. So in the end, the proposal is let's talk. And sorry for being two minutes over time.